As the capital of the Philippines, Manila is situated on the eastern shore of Manila Bay in Luzon, the largest island in the country. It is the second largest city and also the economic, cultural, educational and industrial center of the Philippines. Manila, known as Metro Manila, the core area of urban development, is home to 10 million people. Venerable Master Xin Yun thinks that when Fo Guangshan's Buddhism propagation spreads to the Philippines, it must reach the capital Manila in order to expand the influence of Buddhism. I hope that all of you, the Fo Guan San people in the Philippines, can hold as many activities as possible in the new temple here. With more activities, more people will become disciples or members. Bring more young people to the temple and be kind to your neighbors. I've seen many children in the Philippines. They are so adorable. Those children are three or four years old. They are chanting the name of Amitabha. Those children are really adorable. It's such a great name, endowed with a myriad of virtues. One word, Amitabha, opens the door to heaven and points the way to the pure land. In 1992, Venerable Yongguang was sent on a mission to Manila alone. He settled in Eric Market in Ongpin, Manila's Chinatown, and established Manila Meditation Center. Venerable Master thinks that Manila is very important because it is the capital of the Philippines. He asked me to go to Manila But I didn't understand why, because we had no disciples there. How then should I start? But I could not disobey Venerable Master, and still had to go to Manila. What I had with me were three Buddha statues borrowed from the Tsuen Temple and 20,000 pesos borrowed from the Yuandong Temple in Bacalod. So I brought those things and went to Manila. A disciple offered to let us use the fifth floor of a five-story building in Arank Market in Bongping. I noticed that he was new to a place and had no acquaintances in the beginning, I made friends with him out of sympathy. I guess I was baffled. What was this young monk doing here? Every time when he talked to me, he always talked about what I can do for Buddhism in the Philippines.
I didn't know until later that he had come to Manila empty-handed. What he had experienced here makes me admire him. And realize how great the power of vows is. One should keep a compassionate heart and resolve to bring all beings to the vast sea of Buddha Dharma. Venerable Master Xing Yun has shown great foresight, and Venerable Yong Guang has shown a great sense of duty. He came on his pioneer trip to Manila alone. In the foreign land, he embraced Buddhism and was devoted to saving all beings. It's a hard task, but he's never daunted. He took hardship as joy and was happy even though he was as poor as dirt. The place I stayed had nothing but four bare walls, no decorations, nothing at all. So I went to a fruit stall in the street market and asked for a cardboard box. Then I bought some rice with one peso and then bought a mango. I used the box as a table and put the food on it and I had my dinner that night. That's how uh, I started the Buddhism propagation in the Philippines. We didn't have any resources or disciples, so I wore this outfit, which became my recognizable symbol, and walked around in the market every day. I met the one who seemed to have wholesome roots. She smiled at me, and I smiled back immediately. She asked me where I lived. I pointed in the direction of my home. He began from the Chinatown in Manila with four bare walls and nothing else. Enduring the daily power cut of eight hours and hot unbearably muggy weather with no budget for a generator. But Venerable Yongguang never complained or blamed anyone. When he needed to write his work journal, he'd take his desk out on the hallway of the building and work under the dim light. All obstacles were eventually overcome. We had a small center. When disciples paid a visit, they had nothing else to see after paying homage to Buddha, since the place was very small. So I lead them to view Buddhist items. When the power was cut, we put the cabinet outside. Our cabinet has steering wheels, so we could easily push it outside. I introduced the Buddhism items to the disciples, including publications of Guo Guangshan, books by Venerable Master Xing Yuan, and other Buddhism-related material. In the early days of spreading Buddhism, our resources were very limited, so we had to live frugally and pinch every penny. We stayed near the street market, where people sold fish, shrimps, as well as chicken and ducks. Every morning when I did sutra recitation, I'd read aloud. I hoped those fish and shrimps could hear the recitation and be saved. I pray to Buddha that the merits of the sutra recitation can be dedicated to the fish, shrimps, chickens, and ducks so they can be saved and reach the Western Pure Land, Amitabha. What's more important, I kept the incense burning around the clock in this place. It's strange that after a few months, the magnetic field here changed. There was a disciple who was looking for someone on the second floor. 
But when the elevator door opened, he suddenly smelled a fragrant scent. So he asked others if there was a temple in this building. He searched the building floor by floor. Hello, and finally found our center. Some disciples asked me, should we take this type of money? I said, of course. It's their goodwill gesture. So many gamblers became our disciples. They'd make a donation when they won and bought many Buddhism items, such as books by the Master and prayer beads for security. So we've done a lot to preach Buddhism and encourage Buddhist belief. Venerable Yang Guang is very good at explaining sutras. That's why we're interested in listening to his sutra lectures. I love reading books, but sutra books used to make me doze off. After the first two or three pages, because of him, I suddenly understand what sutra books are talking about. That's why I love Fo Guangshan so much. I really learn a lot in Fo Guangshan. I think the venerable Yong Guang is unique. He looks very solemn and is always confident in what he does. He puts ideas into action immediately and sees things in a very different way. I think learning Buddhism helps control one's temper. I used to be quite irritable. Since I started learning Buddhism, my temper has mellowed, and my attitude has improved. Now I'd hold on for a while before getting angry. Also, after learning Buddhism, I know where my direction is in the future. Manila disciples are keen on learning Dharma. Within less than a year, the center could no longer accommodate all the participants. In March 1993, most venerable Tsudrong came to the Philippines to seek a suitable place and bought the former Soviet embassy, which had extensive history, for use as a new location for our center. The center was renamed International Buddhist Progress Society of Manila. However, the three long-abandoned buildings were worn and shabby. Everything was waiting to be taken up and needed a major renovation. Everything was waiting to be taken up and needed a major renovation. The embassy had stood empty for six years. It's composed of three buildings. The Filipino and I came here, then we spent a whole day cleaning the building. I was naive enough to believe that I could organize this place by myself. We started on the first building, and there were a few steps in the front. When we sat on the steps and ate lunch, we looked behind us and there were two more huge buildings waiting for us. My tears dropped immediately. When the renovations took place, we saw many builders working here, but they worked so slowly. When they came in the morning, they'd first have breakfast and perhaps some cigarettes or coffee. At noon, they were ready for lunch at 11 or 11.30 a.m. At 3 p.m. in the afternoon, they were ready for snacks. We supervised the renovation work. Although I couldn't speak their language, I tried to figure out a way to make them pick up the pace. I came up with an idea. I took a desk outside, sat in front of it, and watched them work. 
Actually, I spent most of the time doing my own work. After I finished, I'd turn and look around to show them that I was supervising their work and that I kept records of their progress. Sometimes I'd take a picture of the site to keep track of their progress, so they greatly quickened the pace. One day, when we were in a rush to refurbish the restroom, the workers were slow in knocking bricks. That night, Venerable Master Yong Chan did the work himself. On the next day, when the workers found out, they were really frightened, asking, Are you from the Shaolin Temple? Is the Shaolin Kung Fu? The work will take me a week, but why can you finish it overnight? Where there is a will, there is a way. Because of everyone's concerted efforts, the IBPS obtained many achievements and broke many records. The Philippines is a Catholic country. In order to realize the Master's goal of Buddhism localization, on February 5, 1997, the IBPS participated in a blessing ceremony, jointly held by the Buddhist, Catholic, and Christian groups in the Philippines. It took place in the Bonondo Church, which in the past 400 years has never held a Buddhist ceremony. Then-President Joseph Estrada also attended the event under invitation. This has turned a new leaf in the Filipino-Chinese religion history. After staying in Manila for a year, we formed the board of directors of Buddha's Light Association. That was a very brave thing to do. During the meeting, uh, the chairman asked, uh, Who's willing to form the board of directors next year? We raised our hands bravely. In fact, it was the first time the board was formed without creating uh, an association first. The board of directors was praised by Venerable Master Xingyun as a flawless board. The IBPS in Manila has irrigated the dry land with teachings of Buddhism and benefited all beings in this country. Since the social class is vastly divided and the gap between rich and poor is big, those compassionate masters paid more attention to the slum children. So many innocent and eager eyes. So many chants of Amitabha. How to guide those poor yet optimistic children to form a bond with Buddhism. Some children are from the slums, which is near our temple. In early days, we didn't have enough experience. On Saturdays, we often asked them to line up and started distributing cookies to them. Later we found that this didn't work because they'd eat the cookie at once, then go back to the end of the line again, and ask for another one. Then we replaced cookies with lollipops. It takes a longer time to finish a lollipop. This is how we started spreading Buddhism to Filipino children. They are very adorable. When they first came to the temple, they'd ask me to teach them Buddhist etiquette. But I didn't spend much time on that in the first class. Instead, I taught them how to wash their face and keep themselves clean and neat. I also told them that they must clean themselves before coming to the temple. This is to show respect to Buddha. One day, at our regular meeting time, none of the children came. We wondered where they were and went to the slums to find them. They lived in the slums. In the slums, there was only one faucet. Their parents needed to wash clothes and other things under the faucet. But those children wanted to take a shower because they wanted to go to the temple as fast as possible. So their mothers attached a hose to the faucet and washed a long row of children. You can really see their devotion to Buddhism. We also organized a dream fulfilling trip for the children in the Philippines. There was a theme park like Disneyland in Manila. So, we wanted to take 140 children from the slums and fulfill their dream in the park. They were deeply touched. 
Uh, after the trip, they wrote to thank us. They said it had never occurred to them that Buddhism and the Venerables could fulfill their dream. The ticket cost 500 pesos back then, which wasn't a small amount for a family. When I was very, very small, we are very poor. This is all, this is my dream to go to Disneyland. But Philippines have no Disneyland. Then time will come, they have the enchanted kingdom. And they, we want, when, when, when we are very small kids, we want to go to Enchanted Kingdom, Disneyland. But the Pongguang San, when they, when they build their, their Mabuhay Temple here, they make my dream come true. So I thank Master Singin for giving us our dream come true to go to Disneyland. Like a Disneyland, even it's not a Disneyland. It's a, it's a Enchanted Kingdom, it's like a Disneyland to me also. So I'm very thankful to the temple, Mabuhay Temple, and Master Singin. Thank you so much. We would like to thank Master Singin uh, for having this dream come true. Uh, we're very, we're very, very lucky to have this opportunity to go to Enchanted Kingdom for being there for for us, to being uh, kind to 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 our barangay. Very, very thank you, Mr. Master Singin. Nung 14 years old po ako, na, nakarating po ako sa Chanted Kingdom. Natupad, natupad po ang aking mga pangarap. Kay Master Pong Shang. Maraming maraming salamat po sa kanya. Kami to po. Fo Guangshan has done much charity work to help disaster victims and the poor in the Philippines. It has also practiced and localized humanistic Buddhism and has been to wherever Fo Guangshan's help is in need. The president of Double F Triple C Double I, Lucio Tan, also identifies with the master for his ideas of emphasizing education and preaching Buddhism. Mr. Tan is also determined to protect Dharma and has donated land. When uh, Mr. Tan knew that we were uh, going to uh, rebuild the temple, uh, he donated a plot of land of, of 400 square units which was then worth uh, 80 million pesos. Um, Mr. Tan always offers uh, great support uh, towards cultural education. So uh, he reverently donated the plot of land to Fo Guangshan. The land enabled us to construct a more spacious building. We were deeply appreciative towards him. With the disciples running around for the fund and the kindly help from beneficial connections, the groundbreaking ceremony to rebuild Fo Guangshan Manila was hosted by Most Venerable Xing Din in May 2002. After completion, it will be a 10-story multifunctional building. It is located downtown near the busy Rojas Boulevard in the business district and is also close to the financial district, the core of Philippines' economy. It is a convenient monastery in the city. In December 2009, Venerable Master Xing Yuan came in person to supervise the main construction of each floor and the space design. The building will facilitate Buddhism preaching, cultural promotion, social education, international charity work, and other modern functions. He named the monastery the Mabu High Temple and Hen wrote the name for it. He hopes the monastery can last forever. This is what Mabu High means. Also, he hopes it can convert more locals and benefit them with Dharma. The head abbot in the Philippines, Venerable Mao Jing, preaches Buddhism and chants in English in an easy way. 
which enables more Filipinos to learn about Dharma. Venerable Miao Guang from the Department of International Affairs is also frequently invited to local schools to give English lectures on Buddhism, which expand the educational exchange and guide more students to learn about the teachings and culture of Buddhism. The master hopes to guide more locals to learn Buddhism and the local language and to forge ahead from a global perspective, regardless of race or social class. from all walks of life often consult with the master as well. They have learned about the respect and tolerance in the teachings of Buddhism, the compassion to save all beings, and the hope of a perfect ending for everything. Right mindfulness, right concentration. This is the noble you know, last time, there were 50, 60, 70 or 80 people performing Siddhartha the musical. They performed really well. So five people cloistered in Fo Guang San temporarily, and two went to Fo Guang University. This is not too much of an achievement. If in Manila, the capital city of the Philippines, one wants to be a monk, even at an early age, he should be encouraged. After a Filipino becomes a monk, he can lead his fellow Filipinos to adopt Buddhism, which is the most powerful way. Preaching through the Chinese is still indirect. I believe in the history of Buddhism. If Indian monks had preached Buddhism in China and stayed there forever, they would have a major influence in Buddhism preaching. You wonder why there are so many Chinese monks? Because when Indian monks left, after they spread Buddhism in China, Chinese monks took over the job of preaching Buddhism, and Buddhism prevailed in China. What I mean is, we can let Filipino monks preach and serve as missionaries. In Western countries, those who take the jobs of priests, popes, or pastors are excellent young people. Five or ten years later, they will turn twenty. At that time, when these young talents return to Manila to preach, I believe everyone will definitely see the prevalence of Buddhism in the Philippines. Someday, Buddhism will prevail. Let Buddha's light shine in the 3,000 realms in the Dharma's current flow throughout the five continents. When I see all the colors of nature Receive all the treasures to treasure, just like the leaves that sway in the It has been more than 20 years since Fu Guangshan preached Buddhism in the Philippines. It has yielded a fruitful result. From Tsuan Temple in Cebu, Yuan Tong Temple in Bacalod, to Mabuhai Temple in the capital city, Manila, it has been a difficult and painful journey. But we never gave up preaching the teachings of Buddhism 
and never stop making connections with people. Master expects a promising future for the development and localization of Buddhism in the Philippines. He believes in this Catholic country, Bodhisattva has sprinkled the Amrita of Buddhism, which gives off the fragrance of a lotus in full bloom. Everyone gains blessings and wisdom from learning Buddhism, which brings about harmony and stability. Yeah. 